can you tell me if these two lines are parallel based on the diagram and information that's given? Ooh, maybe you don't remember. Let's go back and review real quick those angle pairs that we learned about in the last lesson. Corresponding angles are equal if the two lines are parallel. So you've got four pairs of corresponding angles. They are color coded. Alternate interior angles are equal if the two lines are parallel. If the two lines are parallel, the alternate exterior angles will be congruent. And if the two lines are parallel, the same side interior angles are going to be supplementary, which means they add up to 180. Tell me if these are parallel or not parallel, because why? What do you know about these two angles? They are parallel. And if you explain your choice, it's because these alternate exterior angles are congruent. They are marked as congruent. They each have one little arc on them. That means that those two are the same size which means these two lines must be parallel. Check this diagram out. Use the information that's given in the diagram to determine if these two lines are parallel or not parallel. They're not parallel. These would be alternate interior angles, but alternate interior angles are supposed to be congruent. And since these alternate interior angles are not congruent, these lines cannot be parallel. Parallel or not parallel? Not parallel. See how this one has one arc and that one has two? That means they're not the same size. Because these corresponding angles are not congruent, these lines cannot be parallel. Be real careful. It's not how it looks, but how it's marked that matters. Parallel or not parallel? These angles are same side interior. Because the same side interior angles are supplementary, 110 plus 70 add up to 180. So they are supplementary. These lines must be parallel. Try this one. To be honest, there's just not enough information given here. These angles are a linear pair. They are going to add up to 180, but they're just sitting here on this one line. There's not enough information in a diagram that relates this line on top to the one on the bottom, which we're trying to prove is parallel. You need to compare angles that are up here on the top line to angles on the bottom line to determine if these two lines are parallel to each other. Okay, let's look at some proofs, which are like scary, scary problems to most people, but is a lot of the stuff's gonna be filled in? <laughs> so they're really more like these kinds of monsters. Let me show you. Let me translate this into English. Given that the measure of angle one is 101 degrees and the measure of angle five is 101 degrees, prove that line L, which is this one right here, is parallel to line N. And there's your transversal. Now this is a very common diagram. These are not angle measurements. These are just numbering the angles so they can talk about them. So we know that angle one is 101 and we know that angle five is 101. So when you are doing a two column proof, you're gonna see a statement column, meaning you're making a statement and then you have to say why you're making that statement. In other words, why can I say this? Number one, the first statement I'm going to make is usually something that is given and you just copy measure of angle one is 101 degrees and the measure of angle five is 101 degrees. Now, why can you say that this is true? Well, you can say this is true because they gave that information to you right here. And so you just write given. Now the next line is angle one is congruent to angle five may seem like we're saying the same thing, but in this first statement, you're talking about the measures. You see the little M's. The measures are these two numbers, 101 and another 101. Now we're saying they're congruent. The reason you can go from the measurements being equal to congruency is this reason right here. If the measures are equal, then angles are congruent. You gotta kind of think like a lawyer. Why am I saying that? Because that's a rule. That's the law. That's the definition of being congruent. Their measures are equal. Now we're going right to the final one where we're saying line L is parallel to line N. How can you make this conclusion? If one is congruent to five, look at the diagram. These are the two angles that are equal to each other. These are the two angles that are congruent. What kind of angles are those? 
those are corresponding angles. So that if those corresponding angles are congruent, just like the problems we just warmed up with, then you know that these two lines are parallel. So write something like this. Corresponding angles are congruent only when lines are parallel. Given that the measure of angle 3 is 105 degrees and the measure of angle 6 is 75 degrees, prove that line L is parallel to line M. Same diagram, just some different given information. Statement number one, the measure of angle three equals 105 and the measure of angle six equals 75. How do you know that's true? Why can you say this? It's given, it's that first line. The measure of angle three plus the measure of angle six equals 180 degrees. You can add those two angles together. Why can you add angles together? That's the angle addition postulate. And I don't think anybody is expecting you to know this stuff without seeing it first. So now that you've seen it, when you see a line like this where they're adding two angles together that were previously discussed up above, and they're coming up with a total the reason you can do that is angle addition postulate. And now they're saying that angle three and angle six are supplementary. Well, you added them together and you got 180 and now they're saying the angles are supplementary. Why can they say that? Definition of supplementary angles. When they add up to 180, that's what we call supplementary angles. And now we're ready to make the statement that says line L is parallel to line N. Look at your diagram. Where are three and six? They're right here. Now you see what kind of angles are those? Those are same side interior. And we have same side interior angles that are adding up to 180. That means they're supplementary. So that means the two lines are parallel. So the reason you put for that has to do with the kind of angles they are. Same side interior angles are supplementary only when lines are parallel or something like that. You get the idea? This is why I've been going through these angle pairs pretty carefully. You have to have these down. You have to have them memorized so that you can do problems like this. And when you look at a diagram, you're like, oh yeah, I can spot those. Same side interior. We're going in a little different this time. Given that line L is parallel to line N, now they're telling me that these two lines are parallel. I have to prove that angle 8 is congruent to angle 2. Here are these two. You're probably already getting an idea how to do it because these are alternate exterior angles. Line L is parallel to line N. That's given. 8 is congruent to 6. So instead of going from 8 to 2 directly, I'm going from 8 to 6. And the reason I can say that 8 and 6 are congruent is because they are vertical angles and vertical angles are congruent. 6 is congruent to 2. If parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. 6 and 2 are corresponding angles. All right, so I've got 8 congruent to 6 and 6 congruent to 2. So that means that 8 must be congruent to 2. And the reason you can say that is something called the transitive property. Now I suppose this proof could have been a lot shorter if you just went right to it and said alternate exterior angles are congruent. But this is more fun. I like transitive property. As always, thank you guys for watching. Bye!